Hey friends, welcome back to this mini lecture. My name is Dino. Uh, this one's on the physical nature of typography. I apologize, it's a little longer than normal, so I'll try to zoom through it. Keep your interest up. What is the following? Have you seen this before? Have you seen this before? This image is from one of the earliest visualizations. It's from the Lascaux Caves in France. It's a pictograph, which is a cave painting, as opposed to a petroglyph, which is a rock engraving. It's from southwest France. It's, uh, it's well known because of its quality, size, sophistication, and antiquity. Antiquity. Antique. A.K.A. old. It is up to 20,000 years old. It's beautiful. It's really quite nice. Uh, you might think, oh, how is it made? How is it still around? It's made from natural pigments. That's for the pictograph. And an animal fats for the pictograph. And it's partially carved into stone, uh, hence a petroglyph. It is, uh, there's some debate about it, uh, what exactly it is. It is either representative of people's lives or it's more abstract symbols. As you see, there's different animals in there. What is the following? Think about that and how is it made? What does that look like? What does that look like? What does that look like? It is a clay tablet. It is done by wedge stylus, where the stylus, like a pen or a pencil, is, it etches onto wet clay. It was done by the Sumerians in South Iraq around 3000 BCE. Uh, before the common era why would it be made why would someone go to all that trouble well they wanted to tally the amount of sheep and goats that they had to keep account for them and why would this be important it used the idea of ideograms where an image equals an idea not uh, using pictograms where an image is equal to a word as you see here, you can see the etchings. I apologize, the resolution's not fantastic, but you can kind of get the idea of it, what it looks like up close. What is the following and what does it consist of? It is what? This looks probably a little bit more familiar to you. It is the early alphabet with letters. It's from the uh, 1000 BCE, done by the Phoenicians. Uh, the area where they were existing was Syria, Lebanon, North Israel. And a sign is equal to a sound. And it, can you tell what these are? What are the following different ones, and what do these? Uh, what do they mean? Look at, and maybe read them. Look at them right to left, and think maybe about capital letters. They are the beginning of phonograms, where a symbol is equal to a sound. So the first one means stomp. It's uh, it's right. It's like about an ox. Second one for them going right to left. Sorry, first one's an ox. Second one's a house. Third one's a throw stick. Fourth one's a door. Fifth one's unknown. So it's like the sound, the symbol is equal to the sound. What are the following? Can you see what these are? They're capital letters. They're done by the Greeks. It's uh, 600 BCE. And it is called busto, bustrophedon writing, as the ox plows. So say, for example, if you're going in a, if you think about an ox plowing a field, It'll go in one direction and then it'll go back from that end of, say, one row and go to the next row. So as opposed to the way that we normally write and read. Where you start a line and then go back to the beginning and start another line, go to the end, start another line, go to the end. Uh, what are the following? Can you tell what these are? These are probably looking more and more familiar to you. It's part of the Greek alphabet. It's the Ionic versions of the alphabet from the Aegean Islands. So eventually adopted by the Athenians. 403 BCE. What are the following? These probably look really familiar to you. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. This is a Greek adoption of the Phoenician alphabet. They modified the names and they added vowels such as Epsilon, Iota, Micron, and Psi. That's around 800 BCE. Again, these look very familiar to you, I'm sure. At least I hope they do. Otherwise, why are you here? What are the following? probably looks very familiar to you if you've seen any older classic movies. They're Roman capital letters. They're from Roman triumphal columns in Rome. They commemorate Emperor Trajan's first war in the Dacian War. It is the finest surviving example of early Roman capitals. It's around 114 CE. We've gone from BCE to CE, also known as AD. See, this is sort of a close-up, looking very, very familiar. If you see this below, 
what is this? It's an example of, uh, of environmental topography and why is environmental typography important? This is actually the Trajan, Trajan columns. They're ancient and old. You can tell by the ruins around them. Um, they were used as environmental typography to commemorate certain events. And also, maybe more specifically, maybe more on a practical, useful level, they help to make cities more rational. So you can identify streets and buildings by etching in uh, the name of the street and the building name or building number. And for those of you, you might go, oh, well, who cares about that? We have environmental typography that's quite modern, as you see here. This is me going through one morning on uh, in Penn Station. You see these, these are more ads, but if you see sort of on the ground, environmental typography, how do you get tickets? Go that way. Which way is the ramp? Over there. So that was a really quick intro to physical nature of typography. Thanks a lot for being here today. Again, my name is Dino. Look forward to seeing you again real soon.